now the pick is in. With the 34th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Quan Bailey out of Morehouse College. This guy is a heck of a receiver. Wait, who's this girl? What's going on? All right, so you guys see black athletes with white girls. This is something that's been talked about a long time. Is this something that happens in Germany? Not that I know of. It's wow. the first time I've heard of that. So, this is Maylin. If you guys don't know, she's my girlfriend. She's from Germany. You've been in the United States for eight months. Uh -huh. We've discussed that in previous videos. You guys really liked our last video where I explained the soft guy era to her. So today, we're going to get back into it. Today, we're going to be talking about the hot topic of black athletes with white girls, all right? This, apparently, this is only something that goes on in America. We're going to react to some clips and have a discussion at the end. We're going to get right into the first clip, guys. I'm ready for it. Let's do it. So this is what we're talking about when we say black athletes with white girls, okay? Thank you very much. With the 75th pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Russell Wilson, quarterback, Wisconsin. Ah, I like this pick. I like this kid. I, I'm jealous of Seattle. I wish I could coach this kid. 74% So that video, that photo of Ashton Meme, I think it's her name, uh, Russell Wilson's ex-wife, she's so excited he gets drafted, right? I'm going to show you one more real quick just to kind of show you what people think of this over time. All right, we've got the second video real quick for you. Titans get themselves a big tackle in Isaiah Wilson from Georgia. Came from Brooklyn, Poly Pep, Prep Country Day. Need a little time to adapt to the heat. So, as you can see, the first clip, you know, famous player, Russell Wilson, his ex-wife, she's so excited he gets drafted. This other player gets drafted. He has a white girl all over him, hugged him up. The mom picks the woman up and pulls him off, right? Because she was taking the moment. This is something that's really huge in our culture right now. And people feel like black athletes don't like their own type of woman and my quick quick thing i want to say before we get to another video to react to and ask your opinion is i think it's a numbers game there's just so many more people so many different races as you go to a broader group of people that you're gonna be around more people so you might date someone who's outside your race but how do you feel after those first two clips what do you think do you understand where people are coming from i think i kind of understand where people are coming from i mean i totally understand why people react the way they react but i also have my very own opinion but i think we're going to talk about that later okay well do you think that they, that mom was justified from pulling that woman off, kind of stealing the family's moment, or should it, the girlfriend be allowed? I think it should be the man's uh, opinion or like the man's situation to do that. Like it doesn't matter if you know. Yeah. It should be. Yeah. Okay. I got another video for you. This is what a man describes why black athletes like white women. He calls them snow bunnies. Let's get to the next clip. I think when a black athlete ends up with a white girl, it's because he doesn't identify with the struggles of his people because his entire life, white people have shown him grace because of his athletic talents. So if you've been on a college campus in America, you know how the athletes are treated. So whether you're division one, division two, division three, NAI, it doesn't matter. If you are on a college campus and you are an athlete, and the sh nobodies love you, and the teachers let you pass, but you ain't gotta go to class. Do you really think that you were going to think that white people are bad? So the illusion of inclusion is very, very strong. But what these brothers don't realize is that these same white people that praise them don't like the other black people on the other team. So yeah, I think especially with this NIL stuff, which I'm all for, I think the sh I think the sh nobody craze is really about is about to go even even more crazy bro we're about to we, we got these 18 and 19 year old black boys on college campuses around america in bmws and g-wagons like we need to be extra careful after hearing that the delusion of inclusion like basically the white people only like you because of your talent because of what you would do when they don't really like other black people or other black people on that team and then people are only with you because of nil which is something that's new now name image likeness you get paid basically like influencers do mm -hmm. right what do you think of that? Do you think it's a delusion of inclusion or like, what do you think? Well, first of all, I think if somebody just likes you because of your status, because of the money you make or because you're like in a team or something, that's the big problem. Like no mm. matter what race you are, what race they are, I think that's the main problem here. But we also don't know, like, let's be honest, we don't know how these relationships are. We don't know if they like, they probably just really like each other as human beings, not mm. because of their race or, you know what I mean? Absolutely. That's why I'm like hesitating to, you know, go too much into like one direction because I simply don't know. 
I mean, I really feel you on that. I just feel like it's something that people go back and forth on. It's something I've heard my whole life, even growing up. And like, of course, there's a whole another category we won't get into about like things that when things go wrong. I don't think we should touch on that. This is just a merely talking about something that's popular and going on right now. Um, we're gonna do. We're gonna watch another clip real quick, but. I think as a black man, I've always been made fun of for the way that I talk. You've seen it in my comments, in my videos. You know, they say you talk white or whitewash, things like that. When most of my family's from the South Side of Chicago, I've gone to many different places with my family. I've lived in very rough neighborhoods. I've lived in very nice neighborhoods. And my mom, who grew up on the South Side, speaks the same way that I do. So I think this whole like baiting of the of race and you know being looked at or frowned upon because you don't sound like or do things like the majority around you is a big issue. Yes. But let's get into another clip. I think this one will be very interesting for you as well. See what this gentleman has to, I mean, actually, you know what? I'll go through the woman first. Let's see what this woman has to say. And I'm more than convinced that that is a big reason why we see so many black athletes date white women too or date outside their race. You know, there's a dynamic with, you know, these white athletic teams because white men own those teams. They try to mask it as preference. Oh, I just prefer to date outside my race. But it's not really you preferring them. It's really you using, you know, I'm going to use white women as an example. It's really you using white women as pawns. Oh, if the white man dates white women and I date white women, I'm that much closer to being just like the white man. No. Mm-mm, hon. She's basically saying black men date white women because they are trying to be like white men. Kind of what I just spoke about, like how they assume that because we live in white, maybe white neighborhoods or you date someone who's white or you're, you have money now and you're with someone who's white that you're trying to be white. I don't think that. I know that the majority of the United States is white like in terms of like if you break it up. So again, the more people you're surrounded by, the more likely you are going to date or experience life around people who are outside your race. But what do you think? I mean, let's be honest. The people who make those assumptions, how well do they really know the people they make assumptions of? Like how well do they know the people? Sorry. You're good. <laughs> like, do they really know the people? Like they assume like, oh, those people, want to be more like white people but mm. they, they, did they ever really talk to them or do they just want to have another topic they can talk about and like rant about on the internet i mean i guess i definitely think content is key but I, when i tell you i've grown up and this has been a conversation since as long as i can remember every year when the draft comes on nfl or nba this is the topic of discussion before the internet i remember sitting at like stuff with my family members and hearing them talk about this like there's definitely something that happens when someone gets a little bit more money but i also feel like it's not based off not liking your own people. Mm -hmm. I think if you live in a primarily black neighborhood and you only date white women, that says something different. But if you live in a neighborhood that is multicultural in any way, shape or form or something outside your culture and you go to bars or whatever that there are more people, I just feel like you're going to run into those 100%. people. But I'm gonna bring another clip for you to see what this gentleman has to say about the same situation. A female hit me up in a DM and they asked me, why is it that successful black men always date white women or oriental women when they get some money. Well, I'm attempt to answer this the best way I know how, just by keeping it all the way 1,000. See, a lot of times when men get some money, black men to be exact, they want a woman that's gonna be submissive, that's gonna actually do what they say, and a woman that's gonna just be there to support every decision they make. Asian women, white women are very subtle, very submissive, very easy to deal with. They haven't came up the way black women have came up. And a lot of times when you're dealing with black women, you know, you're going to deal with some kickback. They're not just going to do whatever the fuck you say just because you're making the bread and butter. When a man get power and when he feels like he's on top of his game, he's on top of the world and he got some money, you can't tell him nothing. His ego's to the roof. The white woman might deal with that type of shit because she's just happy to have a black man. She feel like she got her a token nigga. So she's gonna follow his lead and do whatever he says. Cause they just happy to have a black man by their side. Black women, they've been dealing with our bullshit for years. So when we get some money and we start to act a certain type of way and be demanding, they not gonna put up with that bullshit. That's why it's always that combative type of relationship with the black man and the black woman, man. So I had to cut the clip right there. So, okay. This is the part of the argument that people always talk about. It's always black women are combative. I actually don't think that. I think they're, they're just a type of woman that is not racially motivated that are a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more on your case. And I don't think it's about being submissive. But what do you think after seeing that? I mean, you know me well enough. I'm really not a fan of generalizing people. I'm really not a fan of generalizing races. And to be like black women are like this or white yep. or oriental women are like this. It's like... 
it makes me very angry because you never can like overgeneralize people. And the other thing is, I mean, it's like both like the things he said. It's like to me, it honestly sounds wrong from both sides. Like if mm. a woman is like, I just want to be have a black man. There's like clearly some kind of like fetishizing going on, mm. which I don't think is correct. Mm. But if a man wants to have someone who's like submissive and who you know who, where he can feel his power, this is also like a dynamic I wouldn't want to have in a relationship. So I feel like well, listen. First of all, you're gonna do what I tell you to do, <laughs> and you're not gonna ever question me. I'm just gonna pretend that I'm fine. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's fine, guys. No, but I def, I, I, I definitely feel you, and I think we both have talked about people who fetishize different types of people for different reasons, right? Mm -hmm. We both have experienced that, especially living here in LA. Um, there's tons of weird things that happen, and I think yeah, if we ever want to talk about that? Let me know. But it, it gets wild, folks. It gets wild. So. I, I agree with you. I think he's wrong. I think that it's not about being submissive or not. I think it's just about people. I personally think maybe some people it's like that. I'm, let's be real, right? I don't know every single person. If we say they can't generalize, we can't generalize as well. But I definitely feel like it depends on the person. Like if you like someone, you like someone. If you love someone, you love someone. It's not about like if they're more submissive to you or not. But you are attracted to different things, all right? So we're going to go one more clip and then we're going to talk a little bit in closing. We'll go with this last one here. Say like, like people say like black athletes do tend to go for white girls Vic. Mm -hmm. do you feel like that's true yeah I, I think but i the way i view it is like it's more like a like a numbers thing it's not a what do you mean it's not like uh like if i surrounded you by like a thousand like white people like it's just like it's just more like numbers to me more than so like i'm choosing this amazing clip i think that's a great way to close it out because this is kind of what we were talking about like it's a numbers game guys it's not I really don't feel like, and maybe there are some guys that are prejudiced against their own people because within black culture, there's a whole light skin versus mm -hmm. dark skin thing, which, you know, if you ever want to talk about that, I can, exp I mean, you probably have heard about it, but it's something that's really crazy, right? Um, so I definitely understand that some people have a preference, but when you're exposed to more, cult more cultures and more groups, you see it in the videos we watch about Thailand. We watch travel vlogs all the time. Guys will go there like, American guys, or ex-military, and they're in a different country, and they're gonna date who's there. I think that's something that's vastly underrated, but what do you think? 100%, I mean, I lived in many different places, you know yeah. that, and I dated many different people, and like people of different races. And I think if I would have stayed in my hometown my whole life, it would have probably gone differently, just because of the number of people around you. Yeah, some old Bavarian, yeah. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke, guys. My bad. <laughs> the thing is, I truly believe, like in relationships, like if you if you're really looking for a long term relationship, you should look for someone you're compatible with, mm. a person you have feelings for, Absolutely. a person you really want to be with. Absolutely. And in that, like when it comes to that, all those like artificial, like superficial things, like their race, their height, the amount of money they make, like all the things we're always talking about, shouldn't like. If you really like a person, those things don't have any impact. 100%. But if you're just dating like a certain type because of their race, I think you should like question yourself and be like, why do I like fetishize people so much? And what 100%. am I actually looking for? Am I just looking for, for instance, for a black guy? Or am I looking for a partner to like build my life with no matter what race they are? I couldn't agree more. And honestly, let me know what you guys think about this whole topic. I, I feel like Malin brought some amazing points today. Um, this is the first time I've shown her stuff about this. We literally were at lunch a few minutes ago. We filmed a whole different video today. And I was like, do you know about this black athletes with white women? She's like, no. I said, oh, we're making another video. Thank you guys so much for support on the last video we did about the, about um, soft guy era. And in closing, we do st we're still gonna do Passport Bros. She doesn't know about that, but we gonna, we gonna show her what Passport Bros is. I told her to stay off the end, to stay off of like looking it up. <laughs> she can look at the internet for other stuff, but like don't look at that. We're gonna, we're gonna be back. I want her to see what she thinks about that. You know, we got some more workout videos coming, some more workout reviews coming, man. I appreciate and love you guys. Stay tuned for all those videos. I have a video for you guys about finding, you know, to stop chasing women and find a partner. Um, that video is coming out probably next. So with between that one and the video about Passport Bros, we've got some great content coming for you guys. Thanks for allowing me to, you know, spread outside of fitness a little bit. I've been dealing with some injuries, so it's been really great to kind of talk about more. She's seen me kind of struggling to get out of bed most days. So we appreciate you guys. Love you guys. More videos coming with both of us. A couple of some videos with just me, but stay tuned. More to come. Make sure you subscribe to her channel as well, which will be linked down below. I appreciate it. Love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Thanks, folks.